Hello guys and welcome to this video tutorial showing you how to get the most from your static graphs applicator. Uh, first we'll take a look at the applicators themselves before I go on to show you various techniques which you can use when making scenery or terrain for your model railways or wargaming or whatever it may be. So the applicators come in three different sizes. There is a 70 millimeter, 80 and 90 millimeter. Uh, the measurement is of the sieve diameter. The whole spacing on the mesh itself, the grade of mesh is the same on all three applicators. Um, they all pretty much do the same thing. Um, the size difference is more for practicality. So the 90 millimeter obviously being larger uh, gives a um, wider spread when applying the, the grass uh, whereas the 70 millimeter you know, is a little bit tidier for doing uh, fine detail work and obviously the 80 millimeter somewhere in, in between. The 90 millimeter comes with a clip-on container and the 70 and 80 has a container which simply unscrews. Now you can use these applicators without the containers attached but the purpose of the container is to stop the grass from spilling over the edge when we're shaking it side to side during application. You'll see exactly what I mean when we give these a go in just a moment. All the applicators have a activation button which is located on the side. In this case it's a small red one. Uh, you may have a different style applicator which comes with a yellow button like so. They both have uh, a red lamp which il illuminates during use when the activation button is held. All applicators come with this charge wire which runs out from the side. It's about a metre long with an alligator or crocodile clip attached, whichever you want to call it. Crocodiles are better. <laughs> now the important part on the back here underneath the flap is the battery compartment. Uh, the applicator runs on two AA size batteries and I really recommend getting some good quality alkaline batteries such as Duracell Plus Power or Ultra Power or there are other brands available of course but just make sure it's an alkaline pair of batteries that you put in the applicator. You can use zinc and the other cheaper type of batteries but the applicator just doesn't quite perform as well. With the batteries inserted like so we'll go ahead and pop the flap back on and then we're ready to give the applicator a quick test. Now the applicator comes with written instructions which you may not fancy reading all of it that's probably why you're watching the video instead but please at least read the uh, safety section um, as you're probably aware using a static grass applicator there's always the risk of a small shock now does it hurt no not really it comes as a surprise more than anything and by surprise I mean I've been using one of these before and got quite a big uh, jolt um, I ended up throwing the applicator across the room uh, which was down to my reflexes more than anything so if you've got uh, snappy reflexes you might want to be a bit more cautious of those instead. Uh, now you can prevent uh, shocks uh, to your hands by wearing latex gloves or rubber washing up gloves but to be fair so, so long as you're conscious of, uh, of, of the static charge and you keep your hands out of the way your arms out of the way you'll be just fine. So the applicator is live when the activation button located on the side here is held. You'll also see that the red lamp illuminates like so. Now to give your applicator a quick test to make sure everything's working fine, uh, what you need to do is hold the uh, charge wire like so. Um, don't hold the metal part of the crocodile clip otherwise you, you will get a shock. Um, and also don't touch the metal sieve uh, when doing so. But what we're going to do is we're going to hold the activation button, the lamp illuminates, and we're going to give the crocodile clip a quick tap on the sieve. That's how we know that everything's working fine um, and we're good to go. Just another quick uh, safety tip, uh, when you release the activation button, uh, just give the crocodile clip one last tap on the sieve. Um, just to disperse any residual energy. So making static grass tufts, what do we need? Well, we're going to need some of this stuff here, which is uh, baking paper or, or grease proof paper. Obviously you can get that from your supermarket. Um, you can also use something called silicon paper. Um, 
which I've seen on eBay but essentially it's pretty much the same stuff we'll need some glue of course this is uh, your standard white PVA glue I like to add a little bit of water to it not too much just a little bit to thin it out slightly we'll need a brush to apply the glue or you can use a cocktail stick now the important thing that we need is a metal surface or under tray now here are a couple of those um, one of them is steel one of them is aluminium I got these off of eBay um, if you don't have one of these or you can't uh, or, or you want to use an alternative uh, you can use one of these as you can see this one's pretty well used uh, this is just a foil baking tray which of course you can pick up from your supermarket or discount stores so yeah it's just a foil uh, aluminium tray um, you also can use a biscuit tin lid um, but one thing I will say about those is you have to be careful because some of them are coated with a special coating and uh, this can restrict the current uh, from passing through it and 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 then obviously it doesn't it just doesn't work quite so well so if you want something quick uh, to get you started get get your hands on one of these um, and then I really recommend looking on eBay um, I will put a link on the video description uh, there's 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 a few sellers selling these small uh, off cuts of uh, steel and aluminium uh, and these are great for when you're doing tufts uh, obviously they keep their shape as as you can see my uh, catering tray is pretty well used so I'd like to just talk you through the process of making static grass tufts first before I go ahead and actually do it we've got our baking paper here laid on top of our metal under tray and I've used just some electrical tape there just to hold it in in place because we want to keep that nice and flat as we're working what we'll be doing is uh, with the white glue, uh, PVA glue, we'll be putting down uh, some blobs or strips, however, however, whatever shape you want your static grass tufts to uh, to take. So, you know, you can go for long strips, which of course uh, you can put along the side of river banks or roads, etc. Uh, or you can go for really small blobs, which of course, if you're a war gamer you can use on your figure bases and stuff like that so it's entirely up to you uh, what kind of tufts you want to make first of all I'm gonna make some pretty simple four millimeter uh, grass tufts so we'll keep it simple to start with and then I'll go on and show you a few more advanced techniques when using various lengths of static grass another little tip uh, that I recommend is uh, when you get your static grass applicator the sieve is, is as you can see it's dome shaped when uh, we apply the grass a, a little tip for you is to if you push this down on the surface not too hard but it just flattens it off slightly and, and that that comes in handy when we're getting close to the glue as possible uh, when creating the, the tufts it, it, it stops the very tip of the sieve when it when it's in its original dome shape from from hitting the glue and then blocking off the grass from coming through the sieve so just give it a little push against a hard surface just to sort of like flatten that off so anyway when we go to make our tufts what we need to do is connect the crocodile clip from the charge wire to the metal under tray um, and essentially what happens is when the activation button is held and obviously our, our light illuminates to tell us that we've got power we will be going over the top of the glue blobs side to side like so um, and I recommend leaving your knuckle out or your finger just to tap the uh, applicator like so and you want to be getting fairly close to the surface um, so that the uh, grass is drawn to the the chart the static charge that is uh, all over this metal plate here and a way a way to test that things are uh, uh, good to go is is of course keep your hands away from anything metal basically so keep your other hand well clear but we hold the activation button and then we can just tap this metal tray with the sieve As you can see, we've got a 
charge there coming through so that's that's live as we press the the button so once again in regards to safety you know keep your hand your other spare hand clear yeah we'll be going over vigorously like so uh, side to side tapping it against your knuckle we'll be doing a quick initial pass and then we'll be tipping up the tray giving it a tap to shake off the excess uh, collecting it back into the container, loading up your hopper and going over again. And after about three or four passes, we'll have uh, some nice uh, volume to the tufts. And uh, so, yeah, so that's what I'm going to go ahead and do now with uh, some four millimeter. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put down some glue. So as you can see we've got our blobs of glue applied to the baking paper there um, and I'm going to go ahead and load the uh, plastic container with some 4mm static grass. Now, often when you buy static grass you can see that it's all clumped up into balls. Um, now it's not ideal but uh, with a bit of patience once it passes through the sieve um, what you collect up will be the uh, separated. So we've got some static grass loaded up there for our first pass. I'm going to go ahead and just screw the container back on and then we're going to go for our first pass. Now obviously holding the activation button, flipping it over and uh, here we go. So. Just going for a light dusting at first, really. I uh, don't want to go too heavy. Now, it may appear that the grass is just simply laying flat. However, um, after I tip this over, um, it will reveal. Oh, that's not quite the case. So once you've done your initial pass I really recommend just giving the metal sieve a tap against the metal under tray. Uh, sometimes you'll get a build up of residual energy that just needs to disperse um, by doing that. So uh, again you know as a safety precaution I guess just give it a tap on the on the metal under tray. There's no static discharge this time but sometimes there is. Okay, so there's our first uh, dusting of static grass. We're just going to give that a, a quick tip over, like so, and give it a good tap. Just going to move, just clear the uh, surface up here. I mean, already those tufts are looking quite thick, but um, I recommend going over them, you know, three or four times, really. So just loading up the plastic container again with our grass and just going to repeat the process a couple of times so here we go So after our fourth pass, hopefully you can see on the camera there, that's our four millimeter tough. So I'll just try and get a better angle of that there. Hopefully it will focus. So the process is pretty much the same when doing any length of grass. Um, the longer lengths that like such as 10 millimeter um, takes a bit more patience and a, and a lot more layers uh, to build up nicely. Um, with 10 millimeter I always like to mix it with, with um, uh, 6 millimeter and then a bit of 4 as well. Um, it's rare that you get you know grass, natural looking grass which is all, all uh, 
certain length. Um, but yeah, I mean, experiment with the different lengths. Um, I prefer to apply the longer stuff first and then the, the shorter stuff afterwards. And of course you can use different colors. Um, so now I'm gonna go ahead and do some longer stuff. Uh, I think we're gonna go for uh, six millimeter and then four added on over the top. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that now. Uh, the process, as I say, is exactly the same. Uh, so you can go ahead and uh, watch me doing that now um, and obviously I'll speed up the video in, in the uh, dull places so um, it's not so long winded. Of course I should add that when these are dry you can just simply peel them off um, and then uh, apply them to your layout or figure bases or scenery or whatever it is that you should be working on. When you use PVA uh, the base of the static grass tuff is quite solid. I, if if I'm applying a static grass tuff to a piece of scenery or or whatever which has a has a bend, sometimes it's a good idea to use a tiny bit of hot glue just to shape it into place. So exactly the same as before. We're just putting down our blobs of glue. As I say, I'm going to go for a slightly longer length this time. We're going to go for some 6mm and then we're going to dust some 4mm over the top. Just another little tip, you can always go over the top of your static grass with an empty applicator holding the button down as you do uh, in, when it's full of course and um, by doing this you can just buff up the, uh, the grass which you've already, already applied. So have an experiment with that, it's just another little thing that you can do with this. So after a couple of passes of each length, uh, you can see there we've got some focus. Uh, once these are dry, you'll just be able to peel these off and apply them to your layout with another uh, blob of PVA glue underneath or you can use hot glue also. For the last one I'm going to go for some longer 10mm mixed with some 6, 4 and then uh, some 2mm so we'll have a real variation. The longer static grass takes a bit more patience to apply It doesn't go through the sieve quite so easily, obviously because of its length, and it and it tends to clump up also. Um, like I say, it's just down to patience and practice, really. On my models, I very rarely just use 10 millimeter. I, I normally mix it up with some six and four. So I'm going to go ahead and apply the longer stuff first. wiping away the static grass which is collected up on the sieve. Um, you want to keep that nice and clear. Just wipe it away with your finger. a bit of a mess at the moment um, but 
once we add the other lengths it will thicken it out much more and uh, the 10 millimeter looks very realistic uh, when it's mixed up with the shorter lengths so I'm going to go ahead and apply some 6 millimeter on top of that So here's what we've got at the moment, hopefully you can see. Get it in the right place. <laughs> so there we've got some really wild looking grass. Um, that's the 10 millimeter with the six. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some four next and then some two. So there's after we've just added the four on top. Hopefully I can get the camera to focus in. There we go. So there we go, that's using pretty much all the lengths uh, that are available. Uh, a lot of different colours and variation. Um, hopefully you can see those on the camera as the focus is not too great. So working directly on a layout is a little bit different to making static grass tufts. We don't use a metal under tray, instead we apply the glue directly to the surface of your layout. Now I'm using just a cork tile here, but of course your layout will probably probably be plywood or MDF or whatever. The process is the same. Um, so instead of using a metal under tray, what we do is we attach a pin um, or you can hammer in a, a tack, this is a nail of course, but you can hammer in a smaller tack or even a nail um, directly into the area that you're working on. Now you want to work in fairly small areas, um, applying the glue down directly onto the surface and then pushing in the pin or tack into the glue. Now that will enable the glue to, to conduct the static charge across the glue so the glue effect effectively becomes electrified. Rather than pushing a tack or a pin into the glue what you can do is you can make one of these. Now you're probably thinking what on earth is that? Well essentially uh, it is a the inner uh, sorry the outer part of a pen so just remove the um, innards of a pen <laughs> and then um, here we've just got a piece of wire which is coat hanger wire. You can use thinner stuff and what I've done is I've hooked over the end there and applied some insulation tape just to hold the wire in place. Now when using this you're going to be holding it by the plastic handle so you don't get a shock and rather than having a, a stationary pin pushed in the glue what you'll do is you'll point the stylus uh, at as uh, close to the glue and close to the sieve and as we're applying the, the grass you move the stylus around with the sieve. Um, I hope that makes sense. Now shout out to Mel the Terrain Tutor. I don't know if you've seen his channel. Um, there will be a link in the description. I got this little handy tip from him so credit goes to him for the, uh, the makeshift stylus. So I'm going to go ahead and apply an area of glue onto this cork tile. Um, once again I'm using a cork tile. This could be MDF, it could be plywood or whatever you've used for, for your layout. Mm -hmm. 
So there we go, we've got our area of glue laid down with our pin pushed into it. Um, I've loaded the applicator up with some 4mm grass. Um, you can do, go bigger with your areas, I'm just doing a small area here for the for the video. Um, so here we go, we, we're, we're going to go ahead and apply the grass in the same way as we did uh, with the static grass tufts. passes we've got our grass there standing up nicely um, okay so this time I'm going to go for the uh, longer stuff uh, we're going to put on a uh, layer of 10 millimeter and then six and then four and then two like we did with the tufts um, instead of using the pin in uh, pushed into the glue I'm going to be using our lovely makeshift stylus uh, so just so you can see how um, you go about using it to apply the grass okay so I've loaded up the container with the 10 millimeter grass now just a quick note on using this stylus you obviously do not want to touch any of the metal so you know the end of the stylus here or the back of it also which is attached to the clip we're just holding the, the plastic tube uh, once again if you want to avoid any static shocks uh, wear a pair of latex gloves or or washing up gloves that, that kind of thing now um, you shouldn't worry if the uh, sieve touches the um, stylus like so I'll just show you this it's perfectly fine um, you will hit it at some point um, and then once again once you release the button and stop using the applicator just give it the uh, stylus a tap on the sieve just to discharge any residual energy there um, so here we go now you can hold the stylus into the glue like so uh, and hold it in one place or you can you know move it around with with uh, the sieve as you're working both ways work pretty much now I've had somebody ask me about applying static grass to a solid clay model and they were concerned that they would have to drill holes or uh, whatever to, to put in uh, a tack or a nail or a pin uh, so this is the way that you would go about that if you if you're on a solid surface that you can't push a pin into or a nail uh, this stylus is perfect because you can just touch the model um, uh, sorry touch the glue on the model and it will conduct the static charge through the glue <laughs> messy but there you can see that's after two passes of 10 millimeter but I've got all grass hanging over the edge so please excuse that um, there we go that's a bit better <laughs> uh, so we're gonna go ahead and apply some six millimeter now on top okay so six millimeter is in the in the uh, container and off we go really but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add a uh, slight dusting of uh, four millimeter and then two on top of that also we've got some pretty wild looking uh, grass there when we use all the different lengths together with a uh, variation of colors okay so that pretty much rounds it up for this tutorial you can 
achieve some really good effects uh, using a budget applicator. I hope you found this tutorial useful and maybe a little bit easier to follow than reading some written instructions. Um, any questions uh, please go ahead and ask me. Um, you can contact me on our Facebook page there will be a link at the end of the video and in the description um, or you can of course contact me via eBay. That just leaves me to say happy model making and well I hope you find it useful and fun.